Irian SG at the Bryce forum at uh, das3d.com has sent me a model which I am going to import now into this scene and then we'll look at ways of lighting it. Now the model has been sent as an .obj format and it's now asking me for the MTL file which must be something to do with materials well it isn't there so I'm just gonna cancel that and it should load anyway which it has so there's this cube shape which uh, which has been made in Wings 3D I gather and what I'm gonna do I'll just land that on the ground is uh, duplicate this shape a bit so I'm just gonna create a stack of cubes a small stack of cubes I'll just move the ground to one side and uh, quickly manipulate these just copy and pasting them uh, land one on top of the others here and see how this looks right lift my camera up since it's going to be still uh, life I'm going to use a narrower field of view so I'll narrow the field of view and since I'm going to use a premium render effect uh, no I'm not going to animate it I don't know how to do that my document setups I'm going to use a one-to-one -one aspect ratio so it's a sort of fairly efficient shape of render for the type of scene I'm doing so I've stacked these up and you should be able to see possibly by the material properties if I introduce a ambient color that's quite dramatic here that's global ambience that the default material they've been brought in with due to loading uh, has got some ambient in that so we don't want that in our render no thank you so uh, what I'm going to do, apart from fiddling around with the position of these, is set things up to use the uh, the obscure lighting approach that I've been experimenting with recently. And uh, I'm going to set the material for these down to default grey for the time being. So I've only got matte materials in this scene. So when you've got predominance of matte materials, you need a very high level of light simulation. If you've got reflective materials, then the reflections themselves, the way they uh, propagate, bouncing around off the surfaces, even though it just produces distinct images of the reflective background, unless you use very smooth back. In fact, instead of just talking about this, let's let's do that first and then move on. Right. So I'll select everything, and I'm going to give it a material from the uh, Treppenhall set, which is quite reflective. So uh, somewhere in here, I've got these materials stored. Here we go. Metals. This one bright bronze colour is a pretty reflective material and into the Skylab image based lighting use HDR image I'm going to open uh, as Trevenhall 2 uh, 1280 pixel diameter light probe and just set it up so it's going to provide a reflection uh, render in scene turn the quality down in fact I'm going to set the specular and the HDR effect to zero so there's any reflection and I'm going to re-enable the sun so we've got the specular highlight and some direct lighting so here purely through using reflection you can see the render time is going to be quite short you can create quite a good modeling effect particularly once you've had your anti-alias pass which is occurring now then it reduces a lot of the uh, high frequency noise in this reflection so by having reflective materials you don't really need a very sophisticated lighting environment because the reflections taking care of providing us with information about the geometry that's not within the uh, direct light so that's the sort of the opposite example to the one I'm going to give you so I'm going to do away with the reflection now so I'll make the materials matte and you'll see the difference so here we go there's our reflection now it's a matte material we've still got this highlight from the anisotropic uh, specularity channel and now see we've got large shadow regions where we've not got any information and if we go one stage further after doing this and I'm going to go into the Skylab and I'll just disable the sun everything vanishes or if I just disable the diffuse you can see what the result of the anisotropic effect is so these highlights here and and some of the scratches on this uh, material that's been applied to the floor as well so I've just applied it of the same material to everything back into the Skylab swap these two round and just have the diffuse effect you can see that here we go 
in this case we're losing lots of information and getting a very basic lighting environment so what we want to do is is improve on this setup I'm going to I'm going to disable the Sun altogether I'll just set those back up in case I want to use them later on so we've got a completely black scene now and set things up for more advanced lighting so I'm going to use this backdrop add to sky in case I use any reflection later on that's just I may not do that light from inside turn cast shadows off make sure I've got some HDRI effect use apply to light source use well turn off true ambient optimization so uncheck that and include the background so that's my steps now I create a radial light edit that true ambience optimized use gel include background in procedural reset the material to default so that's going to receive the light that's being projected out from the light from inside and call this background make sure you've got a capital B there it's not going to work and then I'm going to scale that to encompass the entire scene in the render options premium effects I'll turn it down to 4 rays per pixel for now true ambience optimization scattering correction boost light and maximum ray depth of 4 now in theory should have got some light in this scene now so this is light that's coming through from the HDRI image here and being lit from the inside to the gel light that's then projecting it back in as trambience light of course you don't get a trambience preview in here so if I turn off light from inside and stick it on exclude for the moment I can now rotate this around and try and get some kind of feedback for where I'm putting my light sources so here we go let's have a look I want something that's coming around from one side potentially so there's quite a, a vast change in the distribution of lighting over the entire HDR image and and the way it gets sampled as well varies the lighting so there we go light from inside again and include let's see what sort of light that's giving us probably not very bright so I need to increase the level of lighting here so I'll do that by increasing this effect so I'll change that to 30 see what that gives us there we go so at the moment because of the way that the HDRI image has been sampled this is providing quite uh, quite a, a predominant light from from this edge which should light the scene nicely there's a bit of noise in this because uh, we're only using four rays per pixel but for the final render I'm going to increase that to um, more rays per pixel so just increasing the lighting so we've got a nice range of contrast I'd get to the point where it's on the brink of being burned out so and have a look at the render time for this so that's only in seconds so what I need to do is I'll increase it to 64 and then you can look at the difference of uh, applying various effects to it so that's saying 6 minutes 40 for this render now I might want to try and have the anisotropic reflection so if I enable the sun that's going to give me some diffuse light so I'll just lose the diffusion for now and see what effect just introducing the specularity has to the render time so that's taken it up to over eight minutes so it's increased the render time but it hasn't doubled it and you get in a bit of a specular highlight on there which uh, adds to the, the overall material quality so before it would have been quite matte and, uh, and now it's got this specularity on so what would be interesting would be to have a, diff a range of different things which uh, if we provide the uh, the range through the the material itself then we can have some that haven't got specular could have one with specular on and we could have one that was reflective and so what I'm going to do is I'll change the ground plane material to default gray so we'll take that on out of the equation so that gives a bit of contrast with the ground plane I'll modify this one on top material will put its reflective quality back in so that'll see the HDRI backdrop that's going to increase the render time a bit with the additional reflection so you can see now that would double where we were before with just the matte materials so I've got these with a specular response and in the background there we've got one that's not got any specular response so 
do I want to go all the way and have reflection considering it's going to increase where's my plot render I've turned it off for another tutorial right this is going to increase the render time so much um, difficult decision that I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to abandon that idea and keep things simple I'll knock the sun out of the equation and we'll just have the matte effect should be fairly interesting I'll increase the lighting a little bit and if you know, you've seen what options are available then you can see the you've seen the impact on the render time we'll just see how this one turns out as if it's burning out the color there eventually if you get too much light then it'll start to distort the uh, the color response you get the hue shift which is, is covered in a, another tutorial anyway so that looks to be a fair balance of light in that scene it says it's five minutes let's turn it right up to 256 rays per pixel and uh, I'll give that a render and we'll see what the noise situation is like at the end of that I'll pause the video here here then is the completed render that took about uh, 21 minutes to render so bearing in mind if we'd introduced a reflection to this it looked like it was about doubling the render time so that would take another well under 20 minutes or so so that would be uh, 40 minutes to render um, because um, it didn't take very long to do so I, I reset up the scene where we were just using regular mode rendering and the reflections and uh, I think that took less than a minute to render and I thought well one thing you could do if you didn't want to go to the trouble of including reflection in this is using a another paint package uh, I'm using here PaintShop Pro you could take your images and I'll bring them both in so if I copy one layer so Control C copies that Control L puts that in on another layer you've got the option of combining these two images so I mean the combined render time is only 22 minutes or so so better than 40 minutes I know it's not as good as actually doing it in the render engine because obviously the reflections then participate in the uh, light distribution of the trambient effect you can uh, you can have fun looking at different ways of combining them so just looking at the different blending modes here and in in PaintShop Pro let's see let's screw through these let's have a look at one uh, sometimes soft light works you have the option of controlling the amount of blending as well in each channel so there you can have sort of a bit of reflective effect uh, combined with the ambient lighting and uh, see multiply that does tend to make things darker when you do that but that can be a nice effect too so as I say there's this, this many options once you've uh, once you've rendered out one channel if you keep this channel separate so you can have like a diffuse channel reflection channel a specular channel and then load them each in as, as a different layer and then con con control the levels which is uh, perhaps less time consuming than testing and rendering out all in one render although as I say it's not the ideal solution so it's not one that everybody would go to so there you go that's the end of the tutorial and uh, that is the completed render